What's up painting friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stuve. Today we're going to do this cute little goldfinch painting together. And it's going to be a quick easy one. I did the entire painting in about 15 minutes and it's on a tiny little easel from the dollar store. So quick easy one for any skill level. I'm not going to show you the paints I used for this, uh, but I will let you know what colors I'm using as I'm blending. So to get started, I'm just using a medium-sized paintbrush and I'm mixing some titanium white with a little bit of ultramarine blue. And as you can see, this dollar store easel, <laughs> this dollar store canvas is very light and is just getting tossed all over the place, so I start holding it down uh, in a little bit here. But I'm just grabbing that white paint, mixing a little bit more ultramarine blue in, and then there was a little bit of sap green left on my brush there. Uh, this is a larger brush I'm using now. It's a flat tipped brush and I'm just making back and forth brush strokes laying a little bit of that green and blue work its way into the canvas as well but in general just keeping a nice very light cool grayish background. Getting nice even coverage all over the canvas. And I'm using acrylic paints here. If you need to order some acrylic paints to make this painting, I have the paints that I prefer to use linked in the description below this video. All right, so we got the background fi uh, filled in with just some base color and now I'm just taking a medium flat tipped brush and I added some magenta, that's that pink color, and I mixed a little bit of ultramarine blue into that magenta, maybe a hint of white as well, and I'm just working that right on top of the wet paint that I just put down for the background. And I'm just making little swirly patterns as you can see with the brush. So this is the far background where we just have some of these, I think it might be a cherry blossom tree, but we have these uh, bunches of little pink purple flowers that are out of focus and they're in the background So that's why I'm just making them blurry by making these swirly little brush strokes and I'm blending it right into that background I'm pressing kind of Firmly onto the canvas to really let that paint blend in with the background color if I did if I just used a very light brush stroke technique, then the paint would just glide over top of the wet paint, so I wanted to work it in and blend with that background color. So I'm pressing pretty hard into the canvas just to get those colors to mix. And you don't want to completely cover up everything you just put down with that white and gray blue color. You want to leave some of that visible and you want to have a good even coverage of the cherry blossom flowers across the canvas so that you have a nice balance. You don't want to leave like a big gap of the background color. You want to kind of kind of have a good balance of the cherry blossoms. I'm starting to add just some pure magenta and that's brightening up some parts of the flowers that are moving closer into the foreground and have a little bit more contrast. Starting to just boost little bits and pieces of the flowers where there might be a little more contrast visible. Don't let yourself get too worked up about where you're putting these cherry blossoms. Uh, if you make a mistake or you feel like you overdid it or you underdid it, then you can always add more or you could cover them up with more of that background color. That's the beauty of acrylic painting. If you make a mistake, it's very easy to fix. Now I blended some ultramarine blue with crimson red and a hint of magenta again, and this gave me a shadow color for the cherry blossom flowers. So I'm just putting this in little crevices and kind of starting to make it look like we have some shadows uh, in the spots like in between the flower petals. So we have clusters of flowers and there are little shadows in between them. And I'm still not getting too heavy into detail. I guess in this entire painting I don't go into too much detail because it's done pretty quickly, uh, but I'm still not building up too much contrast with those ones in the background. I'm just starting to build more contrast up in the bottom left. Now it's time to go in and add some branches. So we have my angled brush, flat tipped angled brush, and I just mixed a little bit of burnt umber, ultramarine blue, 
and white and I'm just very very lightly putting the brush to the canvas and dragging it to create that appearance of a branch and you kind of want your branches to follow along the path of your cherry blossom clusters now I just mix some black in there and that is to push the branch forward so this branch is right up in the foreground we're gonna have a bird um, poached <laughs> perched <laughs> perched that's the word I was trying to get we're gonna have a bird perched on this branch so we have a highlight and a shadow so we have that contrast there and this branch is a little bit thicker see how I made it thicker than the branches in the background that also brings that branch closer to the foreground and again I'm building up that shadow with just some black underneath the color I already had and just adding a couple more little branches coming off of that one you have freedom to draw your branches or paint your branches any way you'd like them to go. If you'd like to have your branch and more of an angle coming down, then you can. Just make sure you have a somewhat flat spot for the bird to be perched on. Now I'm taking magenta mixed with ultramarine blue, and this is my shadow color for the blossoms right up in the foreground here. And as you can see, this is a shade darker than what we have in the background, so we're building up a little bit more contrast in our foreground cherry blossoms. And I also used a small round tip brush for this so that I can get a little bit more detail in the individual little flower petals and little buds of the flowers. Now I'm taking that uh, magenta mixed with white and I'm just starting to add some highlights on those clusters in the background brightening things up a bit and I do this all around the canvas to every cluster of the cherry blossoms and I'm holding the brush somewhat lightly on the canvas here I'm I just want that nice highlight color to overlap what's already on the canvas since everything else is still wet I don't want to push too hard or it's going to start to blend with the colors under it adding a couple more little highlights down there And now I'm adding highlights right on top of the clusters that are in the foreground. So there's a big contrast between that shadow and the highlight there. I'm taking my brush and I'm putting little dabs on each individual little flower petal or bud so that we can really see that that's up close and in focus more than those things in the background. Now we can begin to sketch the bird. So pay attention to your angles here. As you can see, I started with uh, almost like a C shape where the breast of the bird is, and then it comes down at about a 30 degree angle, maybe a 20 degree angle, hits a low point, and then starts to make its way back up slightly at like a 10 degree angle where it meets the tail. And then the back angle of the bird is about 30 degrees as well. And then he's just got a little head at the top there. Uh, think about the proportion of the head of the bird to the body of the bird. Uh, as you can see in this painting, the head takes up about a third of the bird um, on the left side of the bird. So just think about your proportions as you're sketching out your bird. So I started out with just that base yellow, which blended in with my background a little bit because the background's still wet. And I just let that get on there just so I know what parts of the bird are yellow. Then I added a little strip of white where there's some white under the wing. And I'm starting to add a little shadow here at the base of the bird. Then we've got a black top of the wing on this finch. And it comes about halfway between left and right of the head shape, as you can see there. And then the angle is about 10, 15 degrees going down, and then it goes about straight out and then curves down for the top part of the wing. It reaches the back part of the bird and then angles right down to the 
the um, <laughs> the birdie's bum <laughs> before it turns into the tail. And that black just continues out for the tail. He's got a little white stripe in his tail and a couple little white stripes on the wings as well. Since the black paint is still wet here, my uh, white is blending in and turning that uh, white stripe into a gray stripe, so I let that dry uh, before I add the pure white over top again. And these little birdies have a little black cap on their head. So I just covered, put that in there real quick, and then I used a little bit of my crimson with my yellow and a little bit of burnt umber just to get a neutral brown orange for the beak and the beak comes just a little bit lower than the eye um, which I, I didn't even paint in an eye because the whole cap of the head is black so it's implied that there's an eye there but we can't physically see it and then the beak also make sure your beak doesn't come down to the point where the top of the wing is so if you see the top of that wing there's a little space between their height wise uh, for where the beak should go so think about that when you're looking at your bird I'm just adding another little shadow at the base of the bird. This is some burnt umber and black, maybe a little bit of white mixed in. Now we're going to take our cadmium yellow light and that's going to give us that nice bright vibrant yellow that we have on this beautiful goldfinch. And the paint underneath here is still wet. If you want to make this easier on yourself, Go grab a coffee or a wine and wait for 15 minutes while your paint dries and then come back and add this yellow so that your yellow doesn't blend with the colors underneath it. I'm just very, very lightly putting my brush on this canvas and I have a thick, thick heaping of paint on that brush so that it's not going to blend with the stuff under it. But what happens when I do that is I get a texture. So if you're okay with having some texture and you're, you, you like when you can visibly see the uh, brush strokes on the bird then do what I did but if you would like a more smooth realistic looking bird then I would recommend waiting for the background layer paint to dry before you add this bright yellow. Now I'm just brightening up that white. I will be honest with you I ran out of white paint on my palette here and I'm just trying to scavenge white paint from other places that I blended on my palette, uh, but I do go back uh, at the very end of this uh, video for the finished painting. I just add a little streak of white. I ended up adding some more white onto the palette. All right, so the shadow under the breast area has some burnt umber in it, and then it ha it's more gray under the bum of the bird because uh, it transitions from yellow to white in highlight so for shadow it has to transition from brown to gray. And then I made the bird a little too chubby in the back end there so I just started to add a little bit more highlight of the cherry blossoms that we can see peeking through behind the bird. And I just added a couple more little highlights. added a few more little flowers. And then for the final touches, I just make those branches a little bit more visible again, or, or thicken them up a little bit. I further boost the contrast on those branches in the foreground, making them a darker color with just a pure black. And then I adjust a couple little branches. Basically what I'm doing now is up to your own preference. I'm just trying to make things aesthetically pleasing for me. And then I boost the contrast on the branch under the bird again, just to make that the main focus. One of the nice things about this painting is that we have the nice complementary colors. We have the yellow bird and the purple pink flowers. So our brains are happy 
<laughs> when we see those colors together because they're opposites on the color wheel. They complement each other. And just like that, we have come to a finished painting. Yay, good job, guys. If you guys recreated this painting, then you can post it on your Instagram and tag me, The Painting Stoof, so I can see it. Or you could post it on my Facebook page, The Painting Stoof. I'm looking forward to seeing your paintings. Have a great day, happy painting, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.